Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Making Light Two Humans Being. I'm Julie Heert, and with me, as always, is Kate Fago. And today, we're going to talk about the difference or the opportunity, I'm trying to figure out the best way to phrase that, between watching what the universe's plan is for you and the signs and the work, we don't have a better word right now, around that versus or vis-a-vis -vis, being lazy. Because some people may think that you're following the signs and living in your bliss, living in joy, but people may think you're being lazy and you're really not. So we just kind of wanted to talk about that. So, so Kate, I was listening to this, listening to a couple podcasts yesterday and the day before, one from, um, one with Abraham Hicks talking about being in the vortex or putting things in the vortex and then being in the flow and watching the signs and whatever makes you happy, do that. And then resistance. And then I was listening to Mike Dooley has a podcast too. And he was talking about ecstatic living. So getting up in the morning and being ecstatic and always finding joy and being happy. And that too is like being in, in the flow. And I was like, oh, you know, if I, I think in that moment, I'm like, oh, if I were to do anything right now, I would, because I think I was sitting in traffic. <laughs> I would love to just go and find a place with the birds singing or the frog singing Lucas around and just meditate. I'm like, oh, but would that be lazy? And so I had this little conversation in my head about what constant, why people would think that just going with the flow may not feel like work mm -hmm. and therefore lazy. And we were having this whole conversation just beforehand about. Well, I think the first thing we need to do is get rid of the word work, full stop, end of story. But as regards lazy, it's interesting because even in just our conversation here, I think of meditating as work because it's something that doesn't come easily to me. I mean, I love it and I wouldn't be without it. But in my mind, it's something I have to tick off. It's something I have to do every day. And I know that's not the, a great mentality, but I this morning I did not. I've had a really bad headache. I don't know why I've had it. And I've, I've taken it twice as many drugs of all descriptions that I can find that still hasn't shifted but like you know so I will notice a difference if I don't meditate so it I absolutely know and I love it I, I frequently fall asleep but even when I wake up again I just I'm in that nice place and I know that's when special things happen but even just there I was thinking how can you consider meditating as being lazy because for me lazy is lying on a couch watching RuPaul Mm. so it's and that's because I think we associate the word lazy as being something bad that's that's problem number one right um and that I don't know is that universal or is that is that just our upbringing is it just western culture is it generically is lazy bad I think in our culture certainly it is mm -hmm. because it implies things that you're not doing right as opposed to, we should think of lazy as a deliberate act of indulging oneself, I think. Mm -hmm. I know that doesn't work. You know, that's interesting that you say that because I know you've had a teacher or somebody that you follow that talks about lazy or unpredictable time. And Matthew Fox, the Christian mystic that you know I follow, we've mentioned on the show, he just brought up what sloth mean. You know how sloth is one of the seven deadly sins or whatever? And he said, there's a different interpretation for what sloth means. And it doesn't mean lazy. It means I, something to the effect of, and I'm going to have to read back, go back and look, but something to the effect of you're presenting with something, you're presented with something and you do nothing about it. Right. Yes. And is that laziness? I mean, to me, that feels more like um, Denial. Denial. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting words in your mouth as I'm watching your hand signals. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so Nick Bro is very big on this, and he calls, and I've got all his quotes on my phone, but let's see if I can remember, um, he was saying that laziness is um, investment in your vibration, and it is the most powerful investment you can ever make in your life, because with all of the law of attraction is basically, as long as you are pushing, then you are not receiving. So anything that involves work, is you striving in some way, shape or form. And the only time that you are genuinely productive, as in productive in the bigger sense of the word, as opposed to filling in a timesheet, is, um, is when you're in the flow. 
-hmm. and you can't be in the flow if you are striving yeah. so if you work if your paid work or whatever you call work is something you really enjoy obviously that's different Mm -hmm. If it's something that you choose to do, that's entirely different. Most of us talk, think of work, paid or otherwise, as something that we're obliged to do as opposed to something we choose to do, yeah. which, again, is a shame. And you can reframe it. But at the end of the day, we all know exactly what we mean when we, when we say work. Mm -hmm. RuPaul calls it work, which is W-E-R-K. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but that's sort of along the lines of working it, as in, I suppose that is work in a way of performing. Mm -hmm. way. Hmm. Work is also a German word for, you know, like Kraftwerk, you know, the group, the band, Autobahn. Anyway, they work, work, work is spelled that way is actually is also German for work. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But works in like a way of, but it's interesting now that I think about well, it. Gonna, I'm going to look up the definition of work. Uh, uh, no, just W O. Um, well, uh, W E R K. Sorry, this is for television. I don't know. Yeah. Um, like for me, for and when I say the German word "vac," it means like the there's a creativity aspect of it. There's a creation aspect. Like craft okay. is like like the working of the craft or the working to create the craft. Like that's what. Or um, like anything that's a manufacturing facility can be a fabric, but can also be a something vac. Like there's just that's, yeah. that's really interesting because what came up top actually is Urban Dictionary and it says work w e r k oh, do awesome. something to do to do something to an exceedingly excellent capacity, most notably used in reference to dancing, modeling, sexual prowess, and or other physical performance that requires a large amount of fiery attitude, vitality, and vigor. A term derived from the words work and twerk, but now used exclusively in above areas. I love this. This is RuPaul, bitch, you better work. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Work translation in English, German to English to German, English dictionary reverse. So Arbeit Tati Kate. Tati Tati. Oh, Tati Kate. Tati Kate. Work, no indefinite article, ge at work. Hmm. And then it's got some German to do some important. No, that's not. Interesting. Yeah. I'm gonna look up work as in w-o-r-k mm -hmm. i like work i'm gonna say hundreds of job offers having a job is an essential part of oh that's sorry that's citizen's advice <laughs> not a definition <laughs> work is the result of a force on a point that follows curve x with a velocity v at each instant it's not incredible just what comes up like you'd think that the word definition now, physical or mental activity, interesting, directed towards the production or accomplishment of something. Mm. Number two, such effort or activity by which one makes a living and employment. And that's, that's what work has come to mean to us, I think. It's all about getting the money in. And the achievement, like the first, the one definition just before that, that word of achievement. Accomplishment, yes. Yes, how, oh, accomplishment, how we perceive, uh, congratulate, celebrate achievement. There's a disconnect in what that, what achievement actually is or what it should, what, sh yeah, because it should be for anybody. It doesn't matter. And they, I, yeah, this is where we get a little bit thrown off, I think. But it sort of touches on all the, like we've talked before. I don't know if we ever published that um, episode we did about unpaid work, about just how much stuff you do in the house that's not recognized and unseen. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. And I mean, this is an age old complaint that usually affects women, isn't it? Of all yeah. the other stuff that's done, but because it's not recognized in forms of payment, that it is there for undervalued. So there's all of that as well. Yeah. Because housework um, and I suppose childcare would come. I'm just going to look up sloth because she's yes. fascinated by sloth. No, and I want Aversion to work or exertion, laziness, and indolence. So that must be the new definition. Yes. I'm going to 
Let me see, I bet I can find Matthew Fox's here too while we look. Sloth related to slow literally means laziness and their common names in several other languages also mean lazy or similar. See, I, I object, I think we should object to the word lazy. Um, because is it lazy? I mean, if you're a, did I, did, have I already used this example? Were we just chatting? If you're a writer, if you're a philosopher, for example, a lot of your time is spent thinking. Is that work? So if I lie on the couch and think, <laughs> why is that laziness? I feel like it's, um, that then becomes, I think it's this one. Um, that becomes the W E R K. The ver how, we need to because I'll say Berk and then I'll sound like hey, Berk. Huh? We can say Berk. Berk, work, work. What? You want to say with the V sound? Or no? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anywho, it was, yeah. Um because the yeah, was I I don't know what were we just saying? <laughs> We'll work it, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. W E R K, which is more like, I feel like it could be that's a way to say find your joy or be in your joy. Be in your yeah. joy, you know? I like that. Yeah. I do think um, the celebration of how hard we struggle is, has, it's just got to end. It has to. It's just um it's horrible mm -hmm. is that just our society again i mean i don't know what happens in eastern cultures um i suppose mm -hmm. if you think of it you used that you said that example of a buddhist monk who said you know if you if you were to be a monk it's perfectly acceptable in those cultures that the monks get fed by everybody around them they're not expected their um work is about writing poetry. Actually, this is the same in um, pretty sure. If I've got this wrong, please don't. You can all write in, but please don't hate me. I'm pretty sure the Hasidic Jews, like their jobs, the people um, at the top, uh, they write poetry and scripture stories, and, and that's what they do. That's their job. So the They're paid to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you think of um, in, the, in all the religious orders, actually, there are paid positions within that where, or the, the, where they are supported. They're not technically working. They are um, supported in their service. Yeah, Roman Catholic priests and nuns have places to live. Like yeah. Rectories and nunneries and monasteries and that are paid for by the church, which yeah. is funded by the patrons or people that go to the church. So, so if that's your choice yeah. to become, to be in service, to do that, then that's work. Yeah. So why yeah. do you and I feel that the stuff that we're doing, paid or otherwise, doesn't constitute work because we enjoy it, you know? Right. It's, it's, it's just, I, I, yeah, it's something that I really like to understand what happens in other cultures, but certainly in our culture, there's the, there seems to be this attitude that the harder you work, the more worthy you are. Mm. Um, and it's a very competitive environment. And you've been in a corporate world where, oh God, I've been places where there, and I think it's worse than the States. And I think it's true in the legal profession that like, nobody wants to be the first to go home. Right. Oh, Brad was just... Like, yeah, it's they just set up at Brad's work yesterday about people being the last to come in and the first to leave. And then it's an issue. And I'm like, I thought we just walked through this with COVID that where people were working from home, productivity was higher, all this stuff, because people were in a place that allowed them to W-E-R-K. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's just so much. I, I mean, I remember um, the first time I traveled with work, I probably came over to the States and one of the guys that I was traveling with um, for whatever reason used to try and stay on UK time I don't know why because he had a young family but um, uh -huh. but it meant they've completely 
fucking useless, frankly, when it, when he was supposed to be working because he was too tired. Mm -hmm. But there was a whole, so this is a very nerdy, so this isn't necessarily corporate, but a very nerdy environment with engineers, all bragging about how late they'd stayed up working the night before. And I'm thinking, I was looking around, we were supposed to be in this, um, we're in telecoms switch room, which is lots and lots and lots of computers and banking and wiring and everything like that. And there's only a couple of hours a day that you can ever do any work because obviously if the phone lines go down, people get really annoyed. Um, and you, you're working on the racks and they have like a, a scheduled downtime of say three o'clock to four o'clock in the morning or something like that. But, you know, you think nothing can go wrong, but I've been on the top of the racks and dropped a spanner and taken out, <laughs> taken out a hundred phone lines and it's easily done. But they're all, you know, and these guys are all glassy eyed and clumsy because they, they, they've been they're bragging about the fact that because they were in a hotel room and they weren't at home with their families, they just worked all night. And I was standing going, What's wrong with you people? Right. Like, why is this a badge of honor? To, to, it's a badge of honor to give your work away for nothing to a large corporate company that doesn't give a shit about you. That's a badge of honor. Right. It's nuts. No, it's totally nuts. Ariana Huffington that ran the Huff, the Huffington Post and the you know media person that she is, she became so sleep deprived. She was having so many different medical issues. And now she really kind of, I think now she devotes a lot of her time to helping people understand the importance of sleep and rest and self-care and all that stuff now, because she just had, I mean, the universe kind of, the universe kind of pushed her. Well, she was playing, I don't know, I'm going to judge. Anyways, the universe kept showing her signs that she needed to do something for sleep. And then it, you know, she crashed technically her body. And so now she's doing something for sleep to help others too. So um, I was looking up the Matthew Fox blog that talked about sloth and they use the word acedia, which I think, okay. I, yeah, I have to look up the definition of acedia. So let me do that because I think that's the one. Oh, spiritual or mental sloth, apathy. Mm -hmm. So the capital sin of acedia um, as Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas, a Christian mystic, defined it back in the day the lack of energy to begin new things. So if so, laziness doesn't necessarily, I guess what we would might say is that be laying on the couch watching RuPaul or sitting on the couch and meditating or taking a walk, that's not the lack of energy to do new things. That's a moment for, a, there's a couple things, our bodies to catch up to the stuff we're processing spiritually, mentally, emotionally, all the things as well as taking in new input and inspiration, of course, to create something new is what I would argue. And also this sort of, because laziness is seen as like, it's one of the sins, isn't it? Sloth is one of the deadly sins. Yes. And it is seen in our society as just being about the worst of the worst. You know, it's preferable to mug and kill than it is to be lazy. Yeah. Um, and yet, like, why? If you think about it, when people are, lazy typically it's because they're uninspired unhappy unwell you know there's a million reasons why people are lazy but it's not i'm going to just sit on the couch and do nothing that is not what constitutes laziness it's it's a sort of end product of a lot of things that are probably making somebody very unhappy so again why the you know it's, i i don't know for me it was my I suppose it's my mum and in her context it would be that I hadn't done something that she expected me to do so actually again it's all about pleasing someone mm -hmm. and that's what Abraham always says is you know being selfish and lazy which often go together and I suppose they are the two triggering words for me yeah. mm -hmm. um, selfishness is when you want to do who <laughs> you don't want to do for someone else what they want you to do for them mm -hmm. like that's it Right. There, there's no altruism in it really it's about I want you to do that for me and if you don't do that you're selfish and again we're brought up to think that being selfish is wrong and like the Abraham message is selfishness is perfectly fine and you need yeah. to learn more of it right because oh, we turned ourselves in following around. sorry I interrupted you no I was just gonna say how we've turned ourselves around continue <laughs> yeah in yes. in following what other people want you to do we've all gone down the wrong path mm -hmm. that our whole society is around pleasing others bad enough 
that you are pleasing people in your family, i.e. your parents and your siblings or whatever, by keeping the peace, by keeping your mouth shut, by doing the jobs that they expect of you, for having the families or having the children that your spouse wants or all these things that we all do and that ultimately lead to our unhappiness. Worse than that, we now do it for money. Mm -hmm. But for complete strangers to whom have no, we have no emotional bond with whatsoever. And that's, oh, yeah. Awful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You're just making me think of all the putting, yeah, the, 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 the bar, you, like you, you begin to, as a human right now in this culture, you begin to think the bar is here and it's X amount of money and it's this type of car and it's this type of house. And it's all these external things. Meanwhile, you're dead inside and not happy. And you continue to, I mean, I just remember at the, when I was in advertising at the agency and just, you know, in any of the agencies that I worked with and you'd get to that point either in the day, in the week, and you just couldn't, like you just physically, I couldn't move. And all I wanted to do was just like completely zone out. So like when you were talking about being on the couch, it's like, is that not the spirit's desire? The moment you just need to veg or you need to chill or be lazy. Yes. Is that not the, so the spirit's desire to find that read, that connection again to what you're really supposed to do? Because you have to shut it all off mm -hmm. to really hear what the universe wants of you. And that's, that's it. I'm going to find my nick bro, but that, that's exactly, and Abraham says the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, there is no such thing as laziness. If you want to lie on a couch, lie on the couch until such time that you can't, because you've got, you know, it's like, wait till you want to do something so badly that you have to do it. Yeah. And if it takes you six months of lying on the couch or longer, actually that's interesting because I, I managed to find, uh, I told you about Jess Lively does this inner voice stuff and I was talking about us doing it because it's sort of like channeling. It's not, it's, it's like, I think, I think I'll find it's pretty much what we do with our guides, but I wanted to go through it anyway. And it's interesting because I'm only an hour into the first one, but um, this woman, woman was saying how, I don't know what happened in my life, but then she went through all this training and she's like, oh my God, you know, I've discovered the inner voice and this, and she wanted to sit on the couch and meditate all the time, which has never happened to me, but she was enjoying it so much, enjoying being in that bliss. And then she said she crashed and all her colleagues were doing really, really well and she had just crashed. And it, it sort of, sort of resonated with me as well, but it's almost like you can learn all this stuff, but there is a, there is a finite amount of time that you need regardless of what other people are doing where you are repairing yourself it doesn't matter you then get into your ego about oh I've learned to do this and I want to go away and do this you know we've given up jobs and that and then we you know we learn new stuff and we're thrilled by it but we're still being driven by this ego going on or you know you've got to go out and make money you've got to start your new business you've got to do this you've got to do that and then we struggle with it because actually we're not ready it's just our conscious ego going but you've invested money in this it's about time you're earning money let me find the so I'm getting all excited again. Let me find my um, Nick Bro because he says that the, that's the biggest. I'm stuck in the stuck in the effort and the how. And no, that's not the right one. But that that's the one. His so his thing is be in vacation mode. Um, but he, I won't be able to find it now. But he basically says it's the best. I'm pretty sure it's because I've already put it in my blog. Um, he says that being there's no such thing as laziness. It is purely investment in your vibration and that actually the only thing that is going to move you forward in your life to where you want to be is getting your vibration up. So why is that laziness? Why do we, you know, and it's the hardest thing for anyone to do mm -hmm. is to stop doing and start being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard. Because we were talking about, I, so like right now, for me, I, you know, I would love to be at an income level. I'll just, I'll put say it this way. I'll say the best, I mean, my guides are helping me too. I would love to be at the income level that I was when I was in advertising. I'm not there yet. However, and this to me is the more important part. I am creating that what and whatever that may be and it can be that i might and it's not about the income ultimately it's not about the income level 
It's about what do I need, as our teacher says all the time about making our heart sings, what do I need to make our heart, my heart sing? Because when my heart sings, the everything is there. So everything I need and what, you know, then you even think about goodness, what do I even need? And it's, I mean, it just, it's so exciting to be in that flow that they, that are, you know, all the people that we listen to talk about when I get up on a morning and I'm like, oh, I'm really tired, but I'm just going to, I feel like playing a little bit in like Canva, or I feel like, you know, doing a different video or I don't, whatever it may be. And then something more comes of it and something more comes of it and sign and sign and sign. And it's just like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And then don't you know, things happen and, yeah. and you're well, taken care of. So I, I would like to get your perspective on something because I get a lot of this, like I, I, I I start, like you say, I start thinking about, about what videos I could do. And then at least that I think, oh, I could do a series of that and I could do that. And then I get all fired up. And then it's either I get interrupted because I'm not in the right place. You know, it's sort of in my head. And then it's like I lose it. I just lose it. So I don't know if that's whether I'm just not ready yet, whether I'm cooking. <laughs> to, speaking to my guys, my sister at the weekend, and they were sort of saying that she was it. My sister was someone else, but someone about that we're in this process of it's like you're cooking all this stuff, almost like it's all there, it's all bubbling under. You're just not quite ready yet, and 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 I suppose I suppose actually I talked myself out of it. The moral of the story is it that that will come back up. It will come back up when I'm ready. So maybe it just it's just almost like I feel like I, that if I don't make the action at the right time, that I'm losing it. But actually, that can never happen. No, that yeah. can never happen. Yeah, I mean. I the, an example for me in that situation is like, oh my gosh, I've got a million ideas. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get started. And then the technology will not work. Like I can't, I can't create, exactly. yeah. I go to create the Instagram story and it doesn't want to do any of the stuff I want to do. And that's the universe going, let it go. You put it out yeah. there, put the phone down. I mean, whatever. Go on. Right, but yeah. We both know something like that will happen and then, and then actually it will, it will bubble back. But with so much more that had you jumped the gun, Right. You, would, right. you wouldn't have been able to incorporate that. It's all trust, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But this is this is the biggest challenge because you and I were talking about if we were to do group coaching or something like that. Like I would love to help. I mean, I think I am sorry, I'm not but I'm not against anybody else, but the people <laughs> that are closest to my heart, so people like us, Julie, who have been in corporate jobs or whatever, or or have had families or whatever, whatever, that want to find another way and don't know where to start. Yeah. But I feel like the falling down for a lot of people on what people want is for you to give them answers about how they will manage financially because that's that is what people think is what's holding them back. Mm. What we both know is that actually you can survive on very little because as you say, when you're happy, and here's another snitch to all of this, I was talking to my friend Louise about this, when, if you're ill, no amount of money in the world means anything. What would you give to be well? Mm -hmm. Because when you're not, when you're really not well, Money is completely and utterly, yes, it can, it can help possibly certain scenarios, but there's nothing that you would not pay if you could to make yourself well. It's just like money we use, we hide behind money when actually there's a whole pile of other reasons why we don't do the things we do. And I think that will be the biggest sticking point. And I think if you say to people, I can help you do this, the first thing they're going to want to know is, well, this is all very well and good. What am I going to live off? So this is something I think we need to mm -hmm. a question though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because actually we both know it's irrelevant. Yeah. But it doesn't stop you worrying about it. <laughs> I mean, I just, I think too, I mean, I love this idea. I, if had, okay, so, so many things like, see so many things like when you get, yeah, like, I know. Things you can't even talk. So when I, I just think back to when we decided to move to Alaska, from the mid from Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Um, I, Brad found a job right away. So that happened. And then I'm still looking for the right job. And I said to myself, I want to find the job that makes me feel good because at that point I was already burnt out on advertising and I didn't necessarily want to stay. I didn't, I didn't want to stay in advertising. It was what I knew. And in order to have the money, 
that's what I did. So I, I really honed in though on where I wanted to work and the place where I really wanted to work, I ended up getting hired. And I stood in the woman's office who ended up being my boss, which that ended up not going great. However, clearly she was a soul teacher. I've just been reading a ton about soul teachers. And I know that's what she was um, to help me move to this level of where we are now. But I stood in her office and she was, and she said, I really, you know, before I had the job offer, I really like you. And I said, well, I'll tell you this, I'm either going to continue with you in advertising, or I'm going to get, I'm going to become a dog musher. Like I can't, I'm either, this is it, or I'm doing something completely different and I ended up getting the job. And it was, I do think it's because I just needed to learn a little bit more, but had, I had, I mean, okay. So in that moment, I had a soul teacher, right. And we, I learned what I didn't particularly want in my life anymore, that whole experience, what I didn't want, what I didn't need, all of that stuff. And I had to go through that. Along the way, though, I did actually meet a medium um, who did show me some new things. And, and then, of course, I had dogs pass away and led me to this um, soul level animal communication. However, had at some point there been somebody else to come alongside and say there is a better way that's acceptable because you and I've talked about the need for validation, particularly like that I have, the need for permission, all that. Had someone, I wonder had I, if I would have been able to hear it. It's possible I may not have at the time, but maybe I had to go through that so that I can help somebody mm -hmm. also at now and wherever they are, it's okay to let go of these parameters that we've created for ourselves and actually get to the W-E-R-K work instead of the O-R-K. <laughs> yeah, we need to, we need, yeah, I like that. It's like, what? <laughs> Whoa, I don't know. <laughs> See, that's interesting as you say that, I suddenly realized, um, so when I was working, I was on a good wage, Gary was on a, a good wage and um, we, all my extra money I used to put into the mortgage because I was a quite a late starter. Um, and I, I don't know if you, you're not as old as me, I don't think, but no, we're the same. Know, there is, okay. <laughs> sort of people that are even 10 years younger than me, it was very different. But when I started work that sort of time, um, it, it, anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, there was people who paid off their houses, basically, of people I've worked with. And I was still like 10 years, 15 years into a mortgage. Um, and but we had a second, we had, because of just circumstantial, when we'd moved out of Edinburgh, out of the town and moved to the country, we couldn't sell a house because it was a really bad time. The property market had crashed, blah, blah, blah. So we had rented it out and, and remortgaged and bought a new property. So we had that and that was paying for itself, just, just paying for itself, blah, 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 all of that. But I remember saying to Stuart, my friend at work, and I was like, you know, I just, oh, you know, I just want to stop. I just want to retire. I, I just can't wait to retire. I just don't want to do this anymore. And he said, well, sell a house and it's funny because I hear this in other people all the time you're just like <laughs> and that's because you can't hear it like the, the thought of losing that security and then the irony is six months down the line I couldn't have given a fuck I was leaving I left with nothing mm -hmm. I could have waited for redundancy mm -hmm. because six months down the line I just just couldn't live anymore and it's just so funny how you think these things are so important and then suddenly they're nothing yeah they're nothing I walked away I had lived worked 21 years with that company right I was you know I could have if I had been made redundant I would have had a big fat package yeah and I just I just walked away from it because I did not want to do there was actually redundancies three months later which was really galling but at the time I was like I don't care I just can't do this I so you know, think it's important. That's what we need to see. I get all excited. That's what we need to share with people. Yeah. Is that these these things just do not matter? No, you think they matter, but they're just hiding something else. No, and and for me, the money, money, the money that you need will come. It might not be the money that you want, but that's me because you don't need it. Like I look back at, you know when we were in Alaska, what we were making, we're making now, you know, with me having a different path, a different career, different path, you know, we lost, we didn't, we no longer, I'm not going to say lost, I'm going to put any negativity around, we no longer have the income that I had. And then even then Brad's income here is less than what it was in Alaska. So we're making, you know, a very different level 
and yet we're okay. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to me because I would look back and I'm like, gosh, we made that money. And we did save, we saved money. We did actually pretty good. But I, mean, I still always felt in those moments, like, oh my gosh, it's not enough. Oh my gosh, when There's I get to enough. this level, I'll do this. Or when I, and, I, and we didn't, we're not vacationers. We didn't, because we, we have our RV. So we go away and do stuff like that. So, and I see people taking these lovely, huge trips. I'm like, oh, someday. But it's like, no, because I really don't want to leave the dog. Like there's just stuff, however, I, when I look back, I'm like, look at all the excuses that I put in place. And many of those are gone and look at where I am now. And it's, it feels so much better, even though there's days when I do worry, there'll be times, I mean, I'm human, right? We're two humans being, there's days when I worry about the money and then boom, something happens. It's just, it's the following the signs aspect. That's really kind of fun. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, when you, when you, when you feel comfortable in the big picture, it does feel different because actually when you were saying that, I was thinking, I don't even look at my bank account. Like I know what money goes in and I know what money used to go in, but like three times, probably three times more used to go in. Yeah. But do you know what? We, don't, we haven't run out of money yet. Like I, I, you know, I only made on the shed. So in, my, in this business, because obviously I paid for my training, I am way in the red on this. Um, thousands of pounds in the red on this that's fine it'll work out but in terms of the investment in the shed for example that's been a three-year investment I think this year I might break even possibly but I haven't taken any money out of savings like I, it's it's still it doesn't add up in my head it probably doesn't bear scrutiny but when you know obviously I do it for tax reasons but in the sort of general big picture I think well I only I earn x amount okay so technically I'm paying back a debt but I actually haven't had to take any money out of savings. Like it's just, it just, there's always money there and I'm still paying. I'm about to go on a 301 course. That's going to be another, what, $2,000, is it? Wait, did she announce when it starts? Oh, I don't know. I'll have a look oh. afterwards. Yeah, anyway, so you were, you were starting to say about how there's a new class coming and you're going to take it. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be another big, pile of money but I want to do it and I have money in my business bank account and why not right. so although on paper and according to my tax um was <laughs> I'm fucked but in reality I'm okay I do I've just bought myself a pair of 50 pound boots for riding because it pinched my legs and I thought life's well, too short to have to to not enjoy riding because your stirrup leathers are pinching you because I was wearing <laughs> short boots, just stuff like that, you know, like I don't spend a lot of money, but I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I just spent 750 quid on the chickens to get all their, oh, <laughs> get all their hormones. But, you know, and, and like we're the same. Our petrol's gone through the roof. So when I said gas, I actually meant gas, gas not petrol gas but gas has gone up electricity has gone up and i've just up that they've just sent us letters going oh you know your bills are going to double do you want to increase your direct debit and i'm just like that do you know what i've just done tick 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 just done it and i'm, like, I'm not going to worry about this i'm not going to worry about this because money comes and worrying about money is so counterintuitive and it's something that is so hard for us to understand but you find that the less attention you pay towards your budget it, it just works yeah it works and you have to you have to be able to let go i'm not good at the letting go of the of the of the detailed stuff but i'm okay at a high level yeah like i still worry um you know or is it the other way around it's like i worry at the high level you know because i'd like to be slightly better off um but actually that's ego because financially i'm not doing without yeah that's ego I feel like I should have paid off my debts. Right. I feel like I should be earning more money because I've invested this time in it and because it's a measure of my success. But actually, I'm not suffering because of it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing apart from a massage chair, which I am determined to buy. But again, that's the, the bigger reason I haven't bought one is because I don't want to spend that much money without trying one out. And I don't know where to try one out anymore because so many places like that have just closed down because of COVID. Right. you know and it's a lot of money so if I was really really truthful it's not the money that's holding me back and with so many of these things you know we think it's about the money and actually anyway, I'm yeah. rambling but yeah. yeah so really like in summary it's just how do we how do we um how do we get past what laziness means because I think we need to start celebrating laziness do you think we should just do that 
celebrate laziness. Yeah. Be proud of it. Yeah, let's honor honor the fact that you feel lazy and that yay you because that you're trying to reconnect with source. Or yeah, maybe, or or maybe we do need maybe we need a word that um so we can have answers on a postcard, please. Anyone who wants to answer a word that um so Nick Bro calls it vibrational investment. He's actually got another word, I'll look it up and put it in the notes. You know, but again, in a way, I don't like that because that again is kind of cowing to this idea that somehow we need to be investing. You know, we must be yeah. investing. And then you there's know, a and financial maybe, aspect. Yeah. Sorry. There's a financial aspect of the word yeah. investment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's why he does it because it's for actually he does his work is for people who are professional who have you know struggled with this letting go of stuff. But maybe we should just push the whole boat boat out and just go. Actually, do you know what? We, we should celebrate being lazy, celebrate being, maybe there's another word for that, that doesn't have the negative connotation, but rather than trying to make it sound like it's impressive work, is to actually celebrate the fact that it's easiness. Maybe let's just celebrate easiness. Yeah. Easy, ease, ease. ease. Right, yeah. well, we can have a think about that. Yeah. <laughs> you can come up with a word for next time. Yes. So anybody who wants to put in the comments a word for... Celebrating lazy. Yep. Yep. Okay. Acronyms are allowed. I was even thinking about could we make lazy an acronym for letting, allowing, Ooh. then lounging, allowing. Oh, I like that. Lounging, allowing, lounging, allowing. Um, zinc, that, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. Look, okay, I'll think of that. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah, we're open to suggestions. So please let us know. Cool. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'm Kate Fogo, and with me is Julie Hurt, and we've been talking about work, work, <laughs> investment in um, vibration, and um, so anyone who's got a new word for what we should be celebrating. Um, to get away from this idea that, that work is the be all and end all and actually celebrate. I don't want to say laziness, there's such a connotation to it. So there's our conundrum. Um, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And if you um, have any comments, please comments below here. And you can follow us here on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, and we are making light to humans being. <laughs>